everyone, and thank you for watching WoWhead's overview of the Tanan jungle coming in patch 6.2. My name is Panzer, and I am here with WoWhead site manager Perculia to give you a quick rundown of everything you need to know about Tanan. Let's get started. Tanan jungle has many new mounts, pets, and toys to collect, so here's a quick look at what we'll be covering in the video. Tanan has 12 toys, including 5 from Treasures, 11 pets, including 4 from the Wild and 4 from Legendary Battle Pet Rewards, 9 mounts, including 4 from New Reputations, over 50 rare spawns, who can drop eye level 655 gear, cool transmog items, and vanity items. They can be looted once per day and have free-for-all tagging. And finally, there are 4 New Reputations, 2 for both factions, and 2 split between the Alliance and the Horde. You will need to hit Revered with three of these factions as part of the Draenor Pathfinder achievement, which unlocks Flying in Draenor. First things first, let's talk about how to get to Tanan. Once 6.2 hits, there will be a completed quest near your command table in the town hall of your level 3 garrison. After you've handed that in, you'll complete a short series of quests to build your shipyard. Once your shipyard is built, you'll begin another quest line to invade the Tanan jungle. Now that you're in Tanan and you've completed the short initial quest chain, you can travel to and from this zone freely. There are flight paths all over the place, there is a portal to Storm Shield or War Spear in your faction hub, and there's even an Ogre Way Gate if you have a Mage Tower or Spirit Lodge. Before starting our tour of Tanan, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the unique zone-wide elements. Fell Blight is a new crafting material in Tanan, which is looted through fishing, herbalism, mining, and skinning. Fell Blight is used in new epic gem recipes, as well as stage 5 and 6 crafting upgrades. There are two titles from Tanan Jungle, Of the Jungle from a meta achievement, and Predator for killing the rare Zemrakal. Champions of Hellfire are four special rare elites who will always drop 100 oil and have a chance to drop Medallion of the Legion, which is a thousand rep gain to all Draenor factions, or three different mounts. The Armored Razorback, Tundra Ice Hoof, and Warsong Direfang. When you kill all four, you earn the Hellbane achievement, and they share a loot table but not a lockout, so you can loot all four once per day. Tanan also has some unique environmental details. Jumping in the Fell Lava gives you the Fell Sludge debuff and buff, which increases damage done and taken and there are vines on the ground that do damage and trap you. There are also four new wild battle pets to collect in Tanan. The Cerulean Moth, Violet Firefly, Bloodbeak, and Fen Crab. As well as 15 elite legendary pets you can fight daily. Defeating them rewards Fell Touch pet supplies, which can contain the Nightmare Bell, Periwinkle Cap, Seaborn Spore, and Zangor Spore Pets. Now let's get right into our tour of the Tanan Jungle. Each faction has their own hub. The Horde have Valmar, and the Alliance have Lion's Watch. The faction hubs are the center for daily quests, all of which reward Apex's crystals. The command table daily also rewards 600 oil, which is important to note since it is the only daily quest for oil. Dailies will also reward reputation with the Tanan factions. If you want to speed up your rep gain, the four champions of Hellfire Citadel have a chance to drop a Medallion of the Legion, which grants 1,000 reputation points to all Draenor reps. Two of the new rep grinds are faction-specific. Hand of the Prophet for the Alliance, and Bolden's Headhunters for the Horde. Notable rewards include a Disguise Toy, Karabur Guard for the Alliance and Frostwolf for the Horde, a Death Tusk Felibor Mount at Exalted, Shipyard Blueprints including Battleships, a Tanan Treasure Map, and a Follower that has the Grease Monkey ability which increases the oil gain from missions by 100%. Reputation with these factions can be earned by doing your daily Apexus quest from the command table and several follow-up quests that are randomized. 
Another Tanan reputation whose quartermaster resides in your faction hub is the Order of the Awakened. Rep can be earned by doing a daily quest in your hub to loot rares and treasures for special quest items. The Order of the Awakened offers all sorts of ref items which you can buy for Apexus crystals like an Arakoa disguise toy, the Blazing Firehawk pet, the Corrupted Dreadwing Mount, a Seeking Crystal item which teleports you to a rare, Solar Priest Vaix, a follower with the Apexus Attunement ability which will grant 100% additional Apexus crystals from missions, and the Multi-Strike Gem Cut pattern for Jewel Crafters. This vendor also sells Baleful Gear and Weapon Tokens, which are 650 eye level. They cost Apexis, but they do not require reputation. You can also purchase Empowered Apexis Fragments to upgrade Baleful to 695. Baleful Tokens will also drop from rares and are looted from treasures in Tanan. Fangrila is a lush jungle where the Saberstalkers reside. Gaining rep with the Saberstalkers is earned primarily through killing elite Blackfang mobs. These mobs also drop Blackfang Claws, which are needed to purchase reputation items. The Saber Stalkers sell two boar mounts, the Wild Gore Tusk at Honored, and the Bristling Hellbore at Exalted. They also sell a Trailblazer item at Revered, which increases the mount speed by 15% in Tanan, an adorable Savage Cub Battle Pet, and the Palace Follower, who has the Apex Predator ability to counter many environmental threats. You can also buy totems with your Blackfang Claws, which summon elites for a weekly quest. Completing this quest rewards the King of the Jungle buff, which increases the Apexus drop rate in Tanan. Next to the Quartermaster, you'll find Skolar. Talk to him and you'll get a cute toy, Skolar's Bag of Squirrel Treats. Finally, you'll find the Corrupted Thundertail and Felfly Legendary Battle Pets in this area. You may recognize the Dark Portal, or what's left of it, from your first experience in Draenor at level 90. The eastern part of Tanan Jungle incorporates the Dark Portal, as well as some references to Shadowmoon Valley and Outland. The Shard of Cyric Battle Pet references the Cypher of Damnation boss, and after completing the new Garrison campaign quests, you can pick up Oranok Tornheart, a major lore figure in Outland Shadowmoon, as a follower. The area nearby the Dark Portal also contains Strange Green Fruit, which turns into the Podling Camouflage Disguise, as well as the legendary battle pet Defiled Earth. Hellfire Citadel is the new raid coming in 6.2 and is located in central Tanan. There are two mount opportunities in this raid, the Infernal Direwolf, which is a reward for completing the Glory of the Hellfire Raider achievement, and the Felsteel Annihilator, which drops from Mythic Archimond. For defeating the final boss on Mythic, players will also be rewarded with the Defiler's End title. On all difficulty levels, Archimond drops Transmog gear and class-specific trinkets. Other drops in Hellfire Citadel include LFR loot, which is 675 to 685, and also an LFR exclusive tier. Normal loot, which is 690 to 705 and tier 18 normal. Heroic loot, which is 705 to 720 and tier 18 heroic. And mythic loot, which is 720 to 735 and tier 18 mythic. To bonus roll the Hellfire Citadel loot, you'll need to get Seals of Inevitable Fate. These are obtainable in War Spear and Storm Shield by turning in Gold, Honor, Apexis, or Garrison resources. You can also get them from the bunker or war mill in your garrison, or by completing five time-walking dungeons during holiday weekends. Something really neat about Hellfire Citadel loot is that some weapons are new models of nostalgic Burning Crusade items. The Edict of Argus is similar to the Apostle of Argus, Calamity's Edge is similar to Cataclysm's Edge, and the Fallen Defender of Argus is a corrupt version of the Aldori Legacy Defender. Another neat reward is the Corrupted Nest Guardian, a pet that resembles an Apexus construct, which is dropped by Shadow Lord Iskar. There are also quests similar to the Sigil of the Black Hand and Blackrock Foundry that allow you to skip earlier Hellfire bosses when you have proven you can defeat them several times. Finally, immediately outside Hellfire Citadel, you'll find Doomroller, a champion of Hellfire Citadel, and Dreadwalker, a legendary battle pet. The Temple of Shinar is a felon-fused temple filled with corrupt Renai by the Shadow Council and demons. 
Amidst all this corruption, you can get an adorable felt pup battle pet. There is also the accursed tome of the Sargeri, which places a corrupt Naru mark on your forehead, and the sassy imp item, who appears to be a grumpy imp who will do your bidding and offer services like transmog and the guild bank. The Temple of Shinar is also home to Vengeance, one of the champions of Hellfire Citadel, and Chaos Pup, one of the legendary battle pets. Zora Marsh is a brown, swampy area with purple polluted clouds, and there are all sorts of interesting things to collect here, like for instance, the perfect blossom toy which gives your pets a fell appearance, or the forgotten champion's blade which is a horde recolor of Admiral Taylor's greatsword. One of the most anticipated treasures in Tanan can be found in Zora Marsh, the Brazier of Awakening. It is a usable item that when placed on the ground will automatically res one party or raid member after a wipe. If you're skilled enough to successfully complete a jumping game, you can loot the bottomless Sitgana Mushroom Brood treasure. When used, it makes everyone appear as a podling. The Fellfire Camp Flame is a fell cooking fire, but unlike most campfires, it reduces spirit. It drops from the rare spawn, Bramble Fell. The ghostly iron buccaneer's hat is looted from Captain Ironbeard and turns you into an undead pirate orc. Also in Zora Marsh are the legendary battle pets Mirecroft and the tainted Mullclaw. The westernmost part of Tanan Jungle is the Iron Front. This directly borders Blade Fury's Hold, which was the setting for the 6.1 part of the legendary questline. This area primarily focuses on the battlefield, but you'll find Podlord Wakawam, a rare spawn who drops the Rod of the True Podlord, a staff with a unique model, as well as Terrorfist, who is one of the champions of Hellfire Citadel. Moving north, you may remember Zethgol and the Bleeding Hollow from Hellfire Peninsula, but it's quite different in 6.2. This area is shadowy and overgrown, with an eerie feel due to all the blood orbs and large rocks with symbols painted in blood. The items you get here are themed around the blood rituals of the Bleeding Hollow. The throbbing blood orb transformed you into a Bleeding Hollow orc who has drained the power of a blood orb to become very muscular and jump long distances. The Vial of Red Goo is a toy that transformed you into a red ooze, similar to the ooze in the Primordius encounter, and it is acquired by completing the Blood Moon event. Another interesting treasure is the Skull of the Mad Chief. This turns the player into an Eye of Kilrog and lets them temporarily zoom around quickly. There is also one legendary battle pet here, the Cursed Spirit. The Ruins of Karnak is an Arakoa themed area and there are quite a few fun things to earn here. The Cursed Feather of Ixan drops from the rare spawn High Priest Ixan and will transform you into a corrupt Arakoa. The Jewel of Hellfire can be found in a treasure near the coast and will transform you into a demon with a soul stone on your head. If you caught that Diablo reference, pat yourself on the back. This is also the jewel crafting hub for epic gems. After you repair it, the Apexis Gem Construct will craft plus 75 versatility gems. The Gem Construct will learn more gem cuts as you find them out in the world and return them to the ruins of Karnak. Every time the Construct cuts a gem, there is a small chance the player will learn a new recipe. This is also where you will find Death Talon, a champion of Hellfire Citadel and the legendary battle pets, Bleak Claw and the Fell Sworn Sentry. Ironhold Harbor serves as the ship docks for the Iron Horde. There is no fell corruption in this area, simply orcs and cannons. On top of a tower, you'll find the Dazzling Rod Toy, which lets you play tag with other players. If you successfully hit them with the Dazzling Rod, your score increases and you grow in size. Next to Ironhold Harbor is the Fell Forge, which is also filled with orcs, but it is infested with fell corruption. One of the most notable treasures in this area are the Fellproof Goggles, which is a cosmetic helm that resembles engineering goggles but has no engineering requirement. Cosmetic means that you can transmog this onto any armor type. A rare spawn in the Fell Forge you may be familiar with is Grand Warlock Netherkuz. Formerly the first boss in Shattered Halls, this Grand Warlock drops his iconic classic PvP robe which he's wearing. The Fell Forge isn't all about orcs though. It's also home to the Fell Flame Battle Pets, which previously were only seen in Shadow Moon Valley. And there are many legendary pet challenges in this area. We've got the Vile Blood of Draenor, Netherfist, Direfame, and Skrillex. And last, but certainly not least, 
The Throne of Kil'jaeden is a fell decayed mountain with tons of level 100 elites. Here you can find the fell tainted Apexis formation which contains around 500 Apexis crystals. It's also home to the legendary battle pet the Dark Gazer and the new 6.2 world boss Supreme Lord Kha'zix who drops at least 10 fell blight and sometimes 695 epics. Thank you so much for watching our overview of Tanan Jungle. We hope you're excited for Patch 6.2 and enjoyed our tour. To learn even more about Tanan Jungle, check out the written guide on Wowhead, our database pages, and fabulous user comments. Perculia and I also host a podcast every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash wowhead called Wowhead Weekly, where we go over everything that happened in the past week in the world of Warcraft. I host a show on Wowhead called Downtime Tuesday that really quickly, it's like a TLDR version of everything that went on in World of Warcraft and Blizzard. If you're interested in that, it is at youtube.com slash trade chat. Thank you again for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please thumb it up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope you enjoy Patch 6.2 in the Tanan Jungle.